So since we are saying so many good things about uh, uh, the EU, let me turn to, to Pedro and, and DigiTrade. Uh, what is your take at it? Looking, since your work is to work with what Europe calls third countries. First, what are those countries and what is your take in terms of their vision of the IP debate in Europe, the US, and between the two? Thank you. Um, well, uh, indeed, we deal with, uh, in DG trade, we deal with the trade-related aspects of intellectual property and with countries outside of the European Union. So the rest of the world, with the exception of our 27. Um, we deal with that on a multilateral uh, level, for instance, in institutions like the World Trade Organization, which you may know uh, have created the first set, complete set of uh, harmonized intellectual property rules uh, called the TRIPS Agreement, the Zakova PIC. Um, that, uh, you know that your trade is an exclusive competence of the European Union, so we address that, in including uh, our discussions at the WTO, on behalf of the 27 member states. Uh, and for that, we need to, of course, uh, be very much in touch and uh, sensitive of the needs and uh, the interests of industry and the IP stakeholders. So it's, it's so valuable to be here today. Um, but also, we deal with it bilaterally. So we have a number of instruments we use with uh, third countries. We focus on priority third countries because it's a very big world and uh, we have limited resources. Uh, first and foremost, uh, China. In terms of IP, uh, I would say in terms of problems in the area of IP, China alone is uh, as big a difficulty as the rest of the world together and as big a challenge as the rest put together because we have of course uh, very important IP players the US Japan where we have mostly very good uh, relations I'm not going to talk uh, about geographical indications but uh, for the rest uh, we see very much eye to eye uh, on a number of subjects we cooperate very closely uh, we have annual uh, dialogues with our US colleagues uh, our equivalent in the U.S. is uh, mostly USTR, U.S. Trade Representative. Uh, so uh, that is the kind of uh, things we do bilaterally. We do, we negotiate the trade agreements that, uh, that uh, were mentioned before. These trade agreements always include a chapter on intellectual property. The, the, the main uh, objective of trade agreements is to open markets, so they lower import uh, tariffs, but uh, when the U Europe is opening its market and lowering its tariffs for imports from other countries, the other side of the bargain is that these countries respect a number of important things to us, rules on public procurement, rules on phytosanitary areas, on services, but of course in intellectual property. So each time we engage in these negotiations, we try to uh, negotiate a solid intellectual property chapter, something that the US does as well very actively. Uh, we do that also because on the multilateral side, improving the rules seems not to be uh, something very uh, realistic except on very targeted areas. Uh, we see that the work in the World Trade Organization and even in WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization, in terms of negotiating new rules is extremely difficult. And that would take me uh, to some point I would only touch very briefly so that I would not be too long. This morning we have seen a lot of positive interventions about the dynamics of intellectual property, uh, how it creates markets, added value. I would maybe like to, to spoil a bit the party and call your attention to some problems, serious problems that we have in this area. They, these problems can be summarized, it was an expression invented, I think, or created by somebody in GE, uh, the erosion of intellectual property. It's not uh, Tadeus then, or at least he's getting the credit for it, but uh, one of the first uh, that I hear this expression, erosion of intellectual property. This has to do with uh, a movement that you will also see globally uh, that is very much criticizing intellectual property. For many years, intellectual property was something discussed between <coughs> legislators, companies, uh, academics. It changed uh, 10 to 15 years ago first with an issue called access to medicines and the influence that patents would have 
on limiting access to medicines by poor countries and it is now exploding in our face uh, with also a debate around uh, the internet and uh, the freedom of information that links more to copyright than to patents but this is something that I think companies and uh, IP stakeholders need to be very much aware it's no longer an issue debated uh, among uh, lobbyists and legislators there is the public opinion uh, the citizens, NGOs, uh, civil society is in this debate and I don't know if you are aware but uh, many of them have a very negative opinion about IP so there is a lot of work that needs to be done some of these uh, civil society operators have been in uh, campaigns which criticize and put into question IP for men more than 10 years and as far as I'm aware I'm not aware of any kind of pro-IP uh, exercise that has been uh, going on in a structured manner during the same period so it's uh, an idea that I leave for the debate mm -hmm. but please be aware that uh, what the thing that you value is also being very much criticized and that uh, what has been achieved and the rules that allow you to uh, prosper and succeed